Hi all, it's Jay from Jay at 3am. In this walkthrough I'll be piecing together a composite in real time and I'll be sharing the techniques that I use to blend and merge layers as we progress. But before we make a start, if you like the content of these videos, please hit that thumbs up below. Maybe leave a comment, subscribe and click that bell to be notified of new videos. Your support really is appreciated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place our base image and scale it to match canvas and right click and rasterize. Next I'm going to bring my second layer right click and this time I'm going to rasterize and trim Next I'm going to choose my brush selection tool and quickly select the rock face. And I'm going to press Ctrl, Shift and I to invert the selection, press delete and that's going to leave us with the image that we want to use for our composite. Control and D to deselect. And the first thing I'm going to do with this layer is I'm going to take the eraser tool and just very quickly clean up the top of that image. And then roughly place it to where we want to want it to be. I'm then going to bring in a levels adjustment clip it to the layer and I'm going to adjust the levels to try and match the colour tones of the layer below. I'm then going to add a mask, select my brush tool, ensure the foreground colour is black, select my brush, which in this case is going to be a rough edge brush, um, which comes pre-installed with Affinity Photo in the masking brushes. Make sure the masking layer is selected. Zoom in a little, and then I'm going to start painting out the areas that I don't want. What I tend to do is I normally paint out more than necessary and then paint it back in uh, to try and be a little more accurate. So I'm going to reduce the brush size very slightly. To try and be a little more accurate. I wouldn't be too concerned about trying to keep straight lines. Um, what you're trying to do is trying to blend the two images together. Um, so if the edge is a little jagged, rough, it'll match with the rock face itself. So I'm quite happy with that. And the next thing I'm going to do to try and add a little bit of atmosphere and add a little bit of mist at the bottom of the image. The next thing I'm going to do is to bring in a few additional elements to try and add a little more interest to the image. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a sky 
um, because as you can see the sky in the background image is very flat there's no color in it so what I'm going to try and do is bring in a little bit of detail and a little bit of cloud so if I go to file place select my sky image and place it to roughly where I want it to be and with this layer I'm going to bring in a vibrance adjustment clip it to the layer and I'm going to turn down the saturation um, because I want it to try and match the color tones of the layer below and that should do us and again with previous I'm going to add a mask but this time I'm going to press Control and I and I'm going to invert the mask what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to actually be painting the sky in rather than painting out as we did with the rock face so brush this time I'm going to use a very soft round brush this time we need to make sure that the color for the foreground is white because we're painting back in select our brush tool I'm going to increase the size of the brush quite a bit and then I'm going to start painting in the areas where I want the sky and the detail. I'm going to be leaving the gap in between the sky and the top of the hills um, because there is a little bit of mist there and I want that mist to stay where it is. So I'll come a little bit too far so change the foreground colour to black and then paint that back out. And I think I'm quite happy with that. So the next things I'm going to bring into the image are trees to line the corners and give the image a little bit of a frame. So if I bring them in, place them, size them. As with previous layers, right click and rasterize. I think that looks okay there. And with this one, I'm going to bring in a white balance to try and blend the, the tones into the background image. Clip it to the layer, so it affects just the layer and not the entire image. I'm not going to push the oranges and reds in the trees because there'll be too much orange in the, the, the overall context of the picture, so I'm going to go for uh, a washed out green for the leaves. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to go Control and J and I'm going to copy that layer, move to the layer below and I'm going to move this one to extend the tree line. I think that looks alright there. And I'm going to go Control and J one more time. And I'm going to bring this one across to the bottom right hand side. Just to add a little interest and try and frame the image a little bit. And one last overlay on that layer. I'm just going to adjust the uh, opacity down to about 40%. I think we're about good there. And the next element I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in one more tree just to uh, start bringing some detail into the top of the image. So file, as before, place, select your image, size it, and I'm going to place it roughly about so. And as with the other layers, right click and rasterize. With this one, I'm going to bring in another vibrance layer. I want to desaturate that green a little bit. And don't do what I've just done. Don't forget to clip it to the layer. Otherwise, it'll adjust the entire image, not the layer. And on top of that, I'm also going to bring in um, 
our white balance. And I'm just trying to get it to roughly match the colouring in the trees at the bottom of the image there. And I think we're okay there. And I'm going to bring in one more element to give some interest into the top right hand corner of this uh, of this piece. So again, file place. And this time I'm going to bring in a few birds to give it a little bit of interest for the top of the hills. I right click transform flip horizontally and the reason I'm doing that is I want the line of the birds to roughly follow the line of the hills above and with this layer with it having a bright white background I'm just going to change the blend mode to darken and I don't know if you can see but when you use a blend mode and darken two layers you often see a hard edge in between the two layers the overlay so to fix this I'm going to select the layer add a mask select a soft round brush again make sure the foreground color is black select my brush tool and then just simply blend in the edges so it isn't so obvious There we are. And one last thing that I do when piecing together a composite is I'll right click and I'll merge visible to bring everything into a single pixel layer. And then with that one single pixel layer, I can then go into the develop persona. And then here we have the options to alter clarity, saturation, contrast. Uh, I'm going to reduce the saturation quite a bit on this one um, because I want it to have that kind of washed out look. Also in a developed persona you can adjust exposure, black points, brightness, contrast as you would do with Adobe Raw. I think I'm relatively happy with that. When done, simply click on develop and there's your final composite. So just to recap what we've done, we've taken a base image, we've extended the rock face and we blended the two rock faces together using a hard edge brush. We've brought in the sky and we've painted that in using uh, an inverted mask and we brought some elements in, we brought trees and we brought mist in to give it a little bit of atmosphere and we've used a, a different blend mode with the, the birds by using a darkened blend mode and then masking out the edges to blend it in. So there we are, our finished composite. So I hope you got something out of this video and you found it useful. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.